This is James Page in Madrid at the FTTH conference event. I'm here with OpenNet CEO Mariam Sulabaritze. Thank you very much for coming and talking to us. Um, you're here uh, partly to be talking about the difficulties of getting FTTH out to remote and rural regions. And so maybe we can start by just giving us a little bit of an understanding of, of, of what are the difficulties in getting out to those, those, those remoter areas. So th thanks for having me. So first of all, uh, I think the uh, uh, difficulty is the difficult terrain and the uh, low population. These are the two uh, main factors that are obstacles for the development of fiber optic network in rural areas. So as you know, the main driving force for every business is the profit and uh, telecom business is not an exception. So when uh, trying and planning the expansion of the network, or uh, and any business is thinking about the profit and this profit should be returned and um, areas where there is no uh, a lot of population and there is a difficult terrain and this difficult terrain need even more investment that means that uh, this investment will be returned uh, or not so so this is the question for uh, for the business so such kind of areas are staying out of coverage area so this is the problematic i think the main problem for for the development of uh, fiber optic infrastructure is these two criteria and of course, this is uh, translated into the profit. So this is the main problem. Okay, that's, it's their problems. Thank you for explaining them. That that everybody here at this event in different uh, countries is is facing. What are any specific problems in Georgia? But uh, maybe also a bit about the the way that you're tackling it uh, through Open. That is 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 very interesting. Perhaps you can tell us a bit more about about how that system operates. Uh, so as you know, the Georgia is quite mountainous region. Uh, apart for the problems I've mentioned, the main problem is the difficult terrain and seasonality. Difficult terrain is really problematic because we have to consider this problem uh, during the even tendering process and construction sometimes take 10 to 12 months because of high mountains and uh, uh, during the construction pro uh, process, for example, our contracting companies, they were forced to um, dig very rocky uh, grounds and they, they were just supporting the ducts directly on the very sharp cliffs so this is a, uh, really problematic and it needs additional investment for the development of infrastructure plus to that this is not a surprise i think that uh, throughout the europe uh, a lot of uh, countries have this problem this is the lack of uh, qualified constructing companies when we're talking about the technical requirements and we're talking about about difficult construction process, this is a problematic. Very small amount of the companies can uh, really deal with uh, su such uh, such technical requirements. So uh, this is again problem for us because we are uh, unable to announce tenders for more than four uh, simultaneous directions. And uh, with the project, with the time constraint, this is the obstacle. Um, and uh, this creates some additional problems for us. Uh, plus to that, in Georgian case, what we have, this is the lack of information about existing infrastructure. So what already exists underground. So we have to know what exists underground and sometimes it is not very much clear uh, what gas pipe or electricity goes where and this is also creates a problem for for georgia uh, sure that must be uh, yeah so you've got two different problems depending on on location yeah. um, but you've got a sort of very unique solution the uh, the open net initiative has got two separate parts to it perhaps you could explain how those two different parts work yeah so uh, the project uh, that is called Log in Georgia that is supported by the World Bank and the European Investment Bank consists of two components, mainly two components. Uh, uh, the biggest component is the infrastructure development that is, that is executed by the OpenNet and where, as I've mentioned, uh, we have to develop approximately 5,000 kilometers uh, till end of 2025. And 
take into consideration the high mountainous terrain. This is quite an ambitious <laughs> plan. Um, uh, but plus to that, uh, we have the second component in the project that is executed by the Communications Commission, that is regulatory authority of the Georgia, and uh, with their media literacy department. So what is done by the second component? This component is dedicated and focused directly to the uh, boost of use of digital services among the connected uh, population. So where OpenNet develops the infrastructure, then Communications Commission undertakes specific training courses and capacity building programs in order to uh, give uh, understanding to the citizens why it is important to connect to the global network. So they are promoting digital finance, e-learning, uh, e-health and other e-government services. So. Uh, this means practically the increased demand from the citizen side. Increased demand means increased profit from the, for the ISP, so they are becoming then stimulated to uh, use uh, open net network and to develop last mile and to connect end users to, to, to the global network. So it's a, it's a twin track approach, we might say, because you, if you're building the demand for the service, but you're also building the networks, you then want lots of people to actually use the networks that are so difficult to build. Absolutely, absolutely. We have somehow simultaneous effect, and we think that this, this becomes our project a bit unique, and this will create effective results. So we, we really do hope that it will have really very effective results. Uh, it, it sounds like a, a really interesting way of approaching it, and uh, uh, the, the from hearing from you today, I'm sure it will be successful, even if we have some ambitious targets to hit. But um, thank you for coming and giving us a little bit of insight, and uh, we hope you have a, a great day at the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and this opportunity to speak about the Georgia and the project. Thanks.